Hello, and welcome to my channel. Try This is a series where I break down a certain game or play style of a game. If you enjoy this content, please consider liking the video to show support or subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos. Today we'll be talking Commander and breaking down Evelyn the Covetous. The video is broken down into chapters which you can find in the description or in the timeline. I'll be briefly covering Evelyn herself, then breaking down some mana base and card draw strategies. I'll talk about some ways to populate our board with vampires and other synergistic cards in the deck. Then I'll be moving on to some special shoutouts I didn't use and budget suggestions for the deck. Let's dive in. Evelyn is a 2-5 vampire rogue that costs 2 blue-black hybrid, black-black-red hybrid with flash, and whenever she or another vampire enters the battlefield, exile the top card of each player's library with a collection counter on it. Once each turn, you may play a card from exile with a collection counter on it that was exiled by an ability you controlled, and you may spend mana as though it was mana of any color that cast it. Finally, someone to challenge Edgar as a vampire tribal commander. Welcome to Value City, Evelyn. Enjoy your stay. Evelyn is a new top contender for Vampire Tribal. She is very efficient Thief Tribal Commander also. The card advantage she provides is completely insane. Tucking these cards into exile essentially expands our hand permanently. It is also very unlikely our opponents will be able to pull these cards out of exile on their own. So not only does she deny them a ton of value, but she also provides so many options for us. We will always likely have a land drop or something to cast, but it is important to remember we can only play one card per turn. So starting off with our ramp and mana base, while I normally don't run fast mana in my decks to help balance with the pot I play in, some honorable mentions are Dockside Extortionist, Jessica's Will, or Dark Ritual. In these colors, our ramp is limited, but remember if colorless can do it, so can you. We're running my three auto includes, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Thematic Compass. In addition, I'm also running Thran Dynamo, Wayfarer's Bobble, and Solemn Simulacrum. We're also running two tribal cost reductions in Herald's Horn and Urza's Incubator, since all but four of our 28 creatures are vampires. One is the Sad Robot, and the other three are cloning cards we'll talk about later in the video. Even though we aren't in good colors for traditional ramp spells, we are in the right colors for card draw. Our three heavy headers are Kindred Discovery, Ristic Study, and Biden of Thassa. Ristic Study's legendary effectiveness probably doesn't need any introduction. And with the huge amount of vampires we're running and some token generation effects, Kindred Discovery will provide us with plenty of gas. Vampires have several flyers that can get in with Bident of Thassa, but more than likely even without them you'll find some opportunities to draw cards. But above all else is our commander. As I said, she's basically a huge engine to expand our hand into exile, and even with one card per turn limiter, she still has a huge advantage. Though all these cards are revealed to everyone, getting our opponent's counter spells, protection spells, removal spells, and ramp spells allows us to focus more on saving slots in our list for synergy or creatures. Unfortunately, blue doesn't have a lot of support for vampires, but there are a lot of clone effects. Spark Double and both Shakashimas on our commander will pile on even more cards into exile, expanding our advantage, or they could clone some of our more powerful vampires. There are even more clones, but these let us dodge the legend rule, and cloning our commander would be the main target for cards like these. Mirror March and Reflections of Lajara will also clone our creatures while putting on even more Evelyn triggers. There are a ton of vampires between black and red, and I won't cover all the creatures in this deck, but as far as expanding our board stay is concerned, Bloodline Keeper produces flying tokens that trigger our commander, and eventually flips into an anthem while still retaining the token production. Expanding into our Thief sub-theme, I'm running Captivating Vampire, Dihada, and Mind's Dilation. It should be easy enough to get 5 vampires for Captivating Vampire, and the Anthem is also a nice bonus. Dihada will eventually steal our choice of creatures, though it's a little slow, so it might be an easy cut for something else. Mind's Dilation lets us just cast things right away and can almost assemble a board state on its own. Blood Artist and Blood Seeker will ping our opponents down, scaling either with our own board state or our opponents. While Twilight Prophet and Sanctum Seeker will chunk them down. The City's Blessing is easy to get in Commander and will likely have enough creatures to drain a ton from our opponents with Sanctum Seeker. Stromkirk Captain and the previously mentioned Captivating Vampire and Flipped Bloodline Keeper will anthem our vampires. Vampire Socialite, Rakish Air, Patron of the Vein, and Cordial Vampire will all anthem them in the form of plus one plus one counters. The Patron and Cordial Vampire will anthem the whole board state, while Patron will also be able to kill a creature when it enters the battlefield. Soren Imperious Bloodlord is a great planeswalker that lets us cheat out any vampire in our hand or buff a creature we control. It's probably unlikely we'll use the Sack Outlet, but it's a nice option. 
Finally, the best two cards in our deck are Vidalcan Orrery and Leyline of Anticipation. Having the ability to cast everything at instant speed really unlocks Evelyn's potential. Instead of being limited to just instant speed cards, we can cast one of our opponent's cards per turn in addition to whatever is in our hand. A brief shout out to cards I cut from my example list, but synergizes well with Evelyn. Playing into the Thief theme, we have Opposition Agent, Hostage Taker, and Dalty Voidwalker. I cut these from my list as none are vampires, but if you want to focus more on the Thief sub-theme, then they might be good cards for you in your own list. I felt I had enough triggers that I didn't really need more of these effects. Evelyn can shut down your opponent's decks pretty reliably just by playing vampires. In my test games, there was always an opponent or two where I hit a combo piece or another choice synergy card without these added thief effects. Thassa Deep Dwelling and Conjurer's Closet helps us flicker vampires for Evelyn's effects, while Panharmonicon also doubles up the triggers. I ended up cutting these cards, as again, things were already pretty efficient without them. I was averaging stealing 10 to 15 cards from each of my opponents without them per game. Also, whenever I had the option to cast them, there was always a better option from the exiled cards. I decided not to run Evelyn as a flicker deck, but it would be a disservice not to mention the potential in this video. Though Evelyn's ability only lets us cast one card per turn, if we cast something from exile, then flicker our commander, making it leave, then re-enter the battlefield, we can cast something else from exile on the same turn while also getting another card from each player's library. In my opinion, this would turn Evelyn into a bit of a solitaire deck, meaning our opponents would spend a ton of time watching us play in comparison to playing themselves. I think this would make the game pretty boring for our opponents and honestly not that fun of an experience for most players. That being said, it would probably be an effective playstyle to build Evelyn around. For some budget shoutouts, our cloning creatures are some of the most expensive cards in our list. To my knowledge, there aren't really cheaper options to clone our commander with a single card. You could run something like Clever Impersonator or Clone to open up more options if you don't care about the additional Evelyn triggers. Kindred Discovery and Rhystic Study are both really expensive cards. We can replace them with Reconnaissance Mission, which will work like Biden of Thassa. We can also run some instant speed draw cards. If Evelyn is out, we'll likely exile a few with her ability and then we can cast them from exile. Brainstorm, Village Rites, or Rummage Spells like Thrill of Possibility could be good cards to replace some of the more expensive cards in this list. Vidalcan Orrery is a pretty expensive card and unfortunately its budget variant is Leyline of Anticipation, which we already are running in this deck. I suggest running budget tutors like Profane Tutor to help get the Leyline out faster. Cyclonic Rift and Fierce Guardianship are two cards that could be easily replaced by Ingeric's Wake and the Gate. In addition to the newer Shakashima, the two most expensive creatures are Bloodline Keeper and Twilight Prophet. Drana, Liberator of Malakur, can buff our creatures replacing the Keeper's Flipped Anthem, and Champion of Dust can draw some cards replacing the Prophet, though the damage to our opponents will be missed. As for finding budget lands or additional budget mana rocks, I recommend checking out managathering.com. This website has a comprehensive list of all the different dual lands and tri lands and utility lands that are released so far for Magic the Gathering, as well as all the different mana rocks. A link to it is in the description below. I haven't covered every card in the example list, but if you'd like to see the rest, the deck list is in the description below. Evelyn can be a huge value engine regardless if she's built more as a vampire tribal like I've done or a flicker commander. With Edgar dominating the vampire tribal scene for so long, I really recommend trying out Evelyn as a leader of that tribe. I think you'd be surprised at how effective she can be. If you enjoyed this video, again, please consider clicking the like button or subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Comment below on cards you think synergize well with this commander, and if you have any suggestions for commander to try in the future, also let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, good luck, and have fun.